Hi guys, I'm Judy Elmore and I'm a freelance editor with Black Wolf Editorial Services. Today I wanted to talk to you about something that's actually probably a bit closer to my own heart and that's about how you find an editor. Not all editors are of equal value and not only that, not all editors are going to get your project. So what do we do? Just as a reminder for those who haven't seen this before, there are various different stages of editing and within this you will have different editors that come in place. You have your developmental editor, your copy editor, and your proofreader and these are all in the different stages of your editing phases. Developmental editing, your copy editing, and of course your proofreading. Not all editors are the same. Not all editors do the same job. Developmental editors, for example, tend to be the big picture guy. They tend to look at overall plot structure, characterization, pacing, uh, your overall language, your dialogue. There will be a variety of different topics that they're looking at, including your overall story flow. Then you have your line editor, and this is one aspect of editing that even editors can agree on as to what the line editor actually does because dare I say you have line editors who are looking at the developmental side but they're looking at it in a little bit more detail and then you have line editors who look at the copy editing side and they look at it a bit more detail and they both take different sets of eyes so that's an interesting one but then you also have your copy editor. And now your copy editor is looking at your punctuation, your spelling, your grammar, all those things that people tr tend to think of as what editing is. But it is a bit more than that. And of course, your final type of editor that you have is your proofreader. And these are the ones that are looking at the formatting and anything that the copy editor may have missed. So. Who needs an editor? Well, there's only one type of writer that doesn't need an editor, and that is the one who writes solely for the purpose of pleasure, with absolutely no intention of ever publishing. Those people can just quite happily write and write for themselves, and they will never have to look at an editor or another set of eyes looking at their work full stop. However, everyone else, if you are looking at any publication path, it doesn't matter whether you're looking at traditional or self, you at some point will need another set of eyes on your work, whether that's a critique partner, a beta reader, or an editor. And that will be at the different stages of editing that you're talking about. So when should you go to an editor? This is a very important question. My recommendation? It's after you've had time to take step back from your manuscript, you've given yourself distance, and then you've gone back to it, and you're giving yourself a chance to edit it yourself. You're looking at it, you've taken it as far as you can go. Once that manuscript is as far as you can take it, then it's time to reach out for help. That's when you go, hey, people, I need help here. Never, ever send a professional editor your first draft. You are only going to be wasting money because all they're going to do is they're going to point out the flaws within your writing itself, which you could have easily fixed if you had taken the time to actually look at it. So never send your first draft to a professional editor. Those first drafts, they go to critique partners or your technical advisors. Now we spoke in a previous episode about critique partners and beta readers and at what stage you are going to be contacting them and what they're for and that's where your first drafts will go. So a professional editor, they cost money. Why? do they cost money? Let's put it like it is. Why do they cost so much money? Because they are expensive. Speaking as an editor, I can say that. We're expensive. Well, you have to think about the different type of editing that you're seeking. Are you looking at just a manuscript assessment, also known as a critique? Or are you looking at something a bit more substantive? Or are you looking at copy editing or, or just proofreading? They all have different costs associated with them. 
how long is your manuscript and what genre are you working in? Because certain genres will attract a certain type of personality and those editors will have different experience bases. What is the experience of your editor and what sort of qualifications do they have? Are they still learning their craft or are they been at this for say 20 years? These are things you need to think about. What other services do they provide? Because if they are providing a wide base of package information, then it might be quite advantageous, especially if you're looking at the self-publication road, to be looking at a full packaging system where you've got the copy editor with the typesetter and your proofreader. That might be worth it. Of course, what is the availability of your editor? If they're a really, really good editor, they're going to be filled up and they may not have a spot in their calendar for you until, hmm, I don't know, midway through the year, maybe even towards the end of the year. You never know. What is the availability that they have? And what sort of lead time do you need? Now, you have an idea of when you want things published or when you want things back, and you need to be able to understand that if you have a very short turnaround time, it's going to increase the cost of your editing. This is just a basic timetable. Now this is just what two of the organizations that are international organizations actually recommend for editors to be charging. So if I look at on the far right, you've got the Society for Editors and Proofreaders. Now this is an organization that's in the United Kingdom and it is like the most prestigious um, editing organization in the United Kingdom. And these are just minimum rates that are sitting here. So you can see that the most expensive form of editing is going to be the developmental editing, either your substantive editing or a manuscript assessments. Now the same can be said from the Editorial of Freelancers Association, which is a United States organization. And they are recommending that editors are charging somewhere between $45 to $55 an hour just for your manuscript assessments on developmental editing. That's quite a big range, but let's shift this a little bit and let's put this into a bit more context. So let's take a look at an example for a reasonable length manuscript, 80,000 words. Eh, this could be almost any genre in the adult or YA categories, but dare I say it, it's probably a bit word light. But hey, we'll carry on anyway. 80,000 word manuscript is still a respectable length. If I was to read this casually, so this is something I picked up and I'm just not looking at it for any detail or any bits and pieces. This is just me. I'm reading it. It would take me about three to four days to go through and read that manuscript. This is assuming that there are no interruptions that I've had. Life doesn't get in the way. And trust me, when you have teenagers, life is always getting in the way. This is just, I'm sitting there sun up to sundown and I'm reading. If I'm putting my editor's hat on, so this is where I'm looking in a little bit more detail and I'm actually looking to tear apart the manuscript and put it back together, my reading time easily doubles, if not triples. And so that three to four days will easily go to six to 12 days, I'm getting on to two weeks here. However, to write a report and translate my notes and make it into something that's coherent and palatable for a client to understand, that's two days minimum just to write my reports and edit them. Because of course, a professional editor should never send a report to a client that hasn't been edited. Of course, two days. That means that the minimum turnaround time, and trust me, this does not count for life or weekends or anything else. Trust me, it's always a lot longer than this. But the minimum turnaround time just for a single read through casual, you know, we're not quite casual. We're looking at the in-depth critiquing of that manuscript. It's eight to 14 days. If I was to turn this into hours based on an eight hour day, that would be you know, 64 
to 112 hours. That's important because if you remember in our previous slide, we were talking about the rates that the different organizations were recommending for editors to charge, and those were based on per hour rates. So that 80,000 word manuscript, if we're just looking at a critique assessment, minimum turnaround of 8 to 14 days, and trust me, I always quote longer if I was to do a project like this, then if we were to use the minimum federal wage, and that's in the U.S. of $7.25 per hour, you're looking at $464 to $812. That's a big range, but a lot of people who actually balk at this price. And this is just the minimum, guys. This is the minimum turnaround time. This is the minimum wage. To put it a little bit more in perspective, in New Zealand, effective April 2019, the minimum wage in New Zealand goes up to $17.70 an hour. And so the same duration of time, that means you would be looking at 1,123, that means you'd be looking at $1,132 to $1,982. That's a huge, huge range. And that is very expensive for most people, but yet this is minimum wage. If we were to use the minimum hourly rate as recommended from the Editorial Freelancers Association, and that's $45 an hour, then you're looking at $2,880 as a minimum and anywhere up to $5,040 for the entire manuscript project. That is just, yeah, I, I hope you guys are starting to understand that this is the reason why it's really expensive. Just to give you a bit of a guideline, I actually have for a project of this length to do a critique assessment, I do have a package deal which includes a little bit of substantive editing as well as the critique and a little bit of mentoring as well, and it's a flat rate. Doesn't matter how long it takes me, it, you know that that's it, and it's $1,700. So it is a bit more than what the minimum wage would be, especially in the U.S., but it's based on a variety of different aspects to it, and it's not just a critique. There are some other aspects to that package. So what are some of the other budgeting concerns that we need to taking into consideration when we're looking at hiring editors. Well, different types of editing are often offered at different rates. Developmental editing tends to be the most expensive. Proofreading tends to be quite quick and easy, so it tends to be charged at a less lower rate. And it is because the amount of detail and eye that it does take Hopefully by the time it gets to the proofreader, that manuscript is really clean and all they are doing is picking up the odd punctuation error that slipped through or the odd word that just was the wrong word that slipped through. And that's it. That's all they're doing. They're looking maybe at some formatting issues, but they're not looking at anything else. For some editors, you're actually paying for their connections within the publishing industry. And if you happen to snag one of these editors, hold on to them. They're gold, absolute gold. Editors will calculate their rates differently. Some editors charge on an hourly rate, some charge based on word counts, and some charge based on a flat fee. How they get to whatever they're calculating is normally based on the hourly rate concept. And so for myself, I have worked out how long it takes me to do a standard length manuscript using similar calculations to what I just showed you. And then I worked out, well, how much do I want to be paid per hour? How much would it be worth? And then I work out everything based on that. And I do charge a flat fee. So if it takes me longer than what it should have, then I'm the one that's at fault, 
It's my onus. I have to take control of that. Some editors, not all, but some will charge separately for phone calls and emails. That's the email support you might get as well as making that phone call to you to say, hey, how's it going? Do you understand? For me, I include this in my package deals. So email support, yeah, everyone gets it. I'm sorry, I, I will happily support you with email. To actually go through and do the phone calls is a bit expensive. So I personally will do things like Skype but I still will allow people to talk to me because sometimes you just need that communication, that one-on-one -on -one communication just to understand the reports. In all cases, regardless which editor you go with and, and what they're offering, make sure you know exactly what it is you're paying for because you don't want any surprises when you get to that bill at the end. So how do you find the right editor for you? Now this is tricky because trust me, it is not as easy as you might think. You can't just go up to any editor and say, I'm choosing you because it doesn't work that way. What you wanna do is first thing, ask around. Ask your writing buddies, who did they recommend? How, what services have they used? What experience did they get? And remember that each editor is different, so different editors are going to be offering different things. Look at the websites for the editors in detail. Assess their knowledge. You're looking at their knowledge, their skill base, their background. You're looking at what do they offer. What else is on their site that's of interest? Is there something there that attracts your eye? contact the editor. Now this is incredibly important because you're going to be looking at timely communications. You're going to be looking at professional. Are they professional in their communications? What is their tone of their communications? I know my communications might be a little bit snarky for some people, but I do try to keep it as professional as possible. But there are others who I have encountered that I've worked with who can be a little bit curt in their emails. But there are others who are just so lovely that you're wondering, maybe it's my writer brain that's coming in going, what's underneath the surface here? What are you not telling me? So take a look at what they're doing in their communications. Ask for a sample edit. Not all editors will actually offer a sample edit. I don't. But I do offer smaller contracts. So if you feel really uncomfortable going for that large manuscript which is going to cost you thousands of dollars then I do offer that shorter smaller contract just so you can get a feel of what it is I can do for you. If an editor says you either take me or you leave me you need to feel very confident that they are going to be the right editor for you before you sign that dotted line. Be advised that an editor actually chooses you. It's not the other way around. You may approach them and you may say, hey, I'm interested in your services, but at the end of the day, it's the editor that says yes or no, not you. While you're sizing up them, they're sizing up you. They're going to be looking at your communications and the way you're doing things. They do not need to take your contract. Even if they're starving, they do not need to take that contract. They can look at somebody else. If they feel at any point in time that you're a troublesome writer, that you are going to be really difficult to work with, or even if they get the feel that maybe you're trying to swindle them out of their money, hard-earned money, or for whatever reason, they won't take you on as a client. Trust me, I have seen it. The writing community internationally is actually a small tight-knit community, but the editing community is even smaller. I am telling you truthfully, guys, the moment one editor has a bad experience with a client 
and that they think that client is a troll and is going to be nasty and is taking people for a ride, they will actually spread the word. I already have on my no-go lists of people, if they, will, if they contact me and I see these names, I won't go anywhere near them. This is because of the way the editing community works. So just be warned, guys. Be nice. Always be nice. So what are the services that I offer through Black Wolf Editorial Services? Well, I'm a developmental editor. I'm also a writer myself, okay? So the services that I offer are on the developmental editing side and looking at story structure, characterization, plot, all these different aspects associated with various different aspects of fiction. But I also do offer that mentoring approach. All of my editing packages and all of my mentoring packages include a combination of both of these elements. So why would you actually be even interested in trusting me? Well, I've been a freelance editor since 2015. I've been writing fiction and nonfiction for over 20 years. I am already published. I'm a writer myself. I write cross-genre thrillers. So you're looking at things like crime thrillers, military thrillers, romantic suspense, high fantasy with particularly sword and sorcery. That's what I write. I also do have paranormal romance. I write military science fiction. Granted, it's near future, but I still write it. So I know the nuances of these genres. I have a certificate in professional editing and proofreading, and I have professional memberships to the Institute of Professional Editors in Australia, as well as New Zealand Society of Authors, and of course, Romance Writers of New Zealand. There are so many different reasons why you might want to hire me, but at the end of the day, the only one who can make the decision as to whether I am going to be useful as an editor for you is you. In our next video, we're going to talk about what it's like to work with an editor. We're going to talk about the differences between freelance editors and publishing house editors because they are different and the way in which you work with them is different. They will have different aspects and different things that they look at and there are different approaches to them. That video should be available for you in the next couple of days. In the meantime, if you have any questions about today's video or any of the previous ones in the series, please feel free to ask. You can contact me on Twitter, and that's at BlackWolf underscore Ed, or you can contact me on Facebook, and that's BlackWolf Editorial, or you can find me through my website, and that's BlackWolfEditorial.com. Alternatively, if you're interested in my personal projects, you can contact me on Twitter, and that's at Judy L. Moore, or you can find me through my website, and that's JudyLMoore.com. Meanwhile, I look forward to helping you take your writing to the next level.